And speaking of today's understanding of what happens in the world of yoga, we must mention the following. It's useless to speak about Ukrainian or Russian or post-Soviet yoga spaces, as we live in the globalized world, both physically traveling the world and informationally. It's possible to note some specific trends of last five to seven years. First of all, it's the increasing importance of professional yoga schools and centers. The image of fitness yoga teacher, which practices both fitness and pilates and aerobics and some yoga, is in the past. To practice something seriously, one must not only to spend all his time on this, but also to practice within this certain school and tradition where one would have critical approach, other thoughts, professional and critical thinking, informational exchange. Most successful professional yoga instructors are those who practice 24-7. Then there is an international collaboration. There emerged lots of interesting yoga conferences worldwide, starting from those popular like Barcelona Yoga Conference, which gathers a huge number of yoga teachers all around the world to exchange their bodily practice ideas. And then we have such conferences as Yoga in Transformation in Vienna and Yoga Darshana Yoga Sadhana in Krakow, which gather all the best professional scientific scholars on very subtle aspects of yoga. Well, I'd say modern research, this scientific approach, is also one of the modern trends. I recently came back from the Esotereology Conference in St. Petersburg, where we had the guests from Netherlands who had initiated some courses in higher educational facilities like the history of Western esotericism, the history of Eastern esotericism, and so on. That which Arsene Tem tried to establish in 1989 now is done worldwide, because it's understood that esoteric should have the systematic, professional and scientific approach and education. Then there have emerged scientific schools, which study yoga not only externally, but also from within. And it's noticed that most of the top oriental scholars are either within Kashmiri Shaivism or Tantra practitioners. Of course, it's not stated publicly publicly, but it's obvious from personal speech. In fact, all the international elite is very tightly interviewed. In one of the previous lectures I showed the Monier Williams photography, made by Lewis Carroll. And what is even more fascinating, think that Karl Marx's daughter was married with the vice president of Theosophical Society. When I studied Sanskrit in Heidelberg, I met a person who went to some conference in Varanasi and met the chief dean, both of whom had studied Sanskrit from Vagish Shastri, my own teacher, and I noticed that they have a similar pronunciation, but they did it around 20 years ago, together with Mark Tichkovsky, and I just noted the Varanasi style of Sanskrit. This feeling of unity of the intellectual, scientific elite of yoga is fascinating. Well, actually, it's a quite narrow community of the European intellectuals who define the way the humanity will develop. Another trend is the deep interest to the roots. In 90s and even 2000s, the reading of Yoga Sutras was the luxury, and actually few were those who read beyond the third line of a text. And now it's a mandatory element of culture for any yoga instructor. More and more people are interested in Sanskrit, try to read Sanskrit texts, and become, in some sense, professionals. The understanding of classical yoga treatises, the understanding of retrospective yoga history, becomes an important tendency. And this is seen not only in our school, but worldwide. When I communicate with Pahomov on St. Petersburg yoga practitioners, or in India, or in Vienna, or in London, it's seen everywhere. Yoga is getting back to its most deep roots, and it's truly interesting. And at last, the yoga therapy development. European scholars are pioneers here as well. Our yoga therapists went to Amsterdam recently on some huge yoga therapeutic session. Then there is a continued tradition of yoga therapeutic conferences in the United States, where we even have the first clinic of yoga therapy. So, here as well, scientific approach is one of the key trends. And there is us, Ukrainian Yoga Federation. Our instructors are probably the implementers of all these trends. And if I would have to draw some tree of yoga, it would probably look like this. In fact, this is the favorite tree of yogis, Banyan or Benjamin's Ficus. This tree has roots, branches and leaves, but it's not clear where are the branches, where are the roots and where is the trunk. Everything is mixed and interconnected. Likewise, the yoga traditions, which interlinked, interchanged, made their own roots and trunks, and now it became not a single tree, but a whole forest, which gives the perfect shade and shelter and the possibility for practice.